Hey guys and welcome to the brand new tutorial on algorithms and data structures in C++. In this video we're going to talk about like the introduction to algorithms and data structures in general and we're going to talk about like the math and the math between algorithms and data structures and what kind of prerequisites you, you need to do algorithms and data structures. And then we're going to talk a bit about like the big O notation where we're talking about space and time complexity which we'll be using a lot in probably all videos along this uh, tutorial. And then lastly, I'm going to talk about and give you an introduction to recursion in, and I'll show you some different kind of examples in C++ and how to set up a recursive function and what a recursive function is. And then like how to use recursive functions in uh, C++. So the first here is just a, a tutorial overview, like a total, total uh, overview over the tutorial and what kind of topics um, I'll be going over in, in the next videos. I'm planning to do a video, a new video on a new topic every week, so there will be um, a new video every week in this, um, this tutorial about algorithms and data structures. And as I told you, like in this video, we're talking about introduction and, and math requirements and recursion uh, regarding algorithms and data structures. And in the next video, we're going to go in more in depth with the big notations and some of the basics um, data structures like queues, stacks, and lists. And then we're going over to, over to like more complex things that uh, like hashing and priority queues and then like the algorithm for different kinds of sorting and we're going to use like binary research trees and something like that and then just going over like different kind of uh, disjoint sets and graphs that we can use in in algorithms and data structures and in, in every video i'm going to show you some different kind of uh, code examples and how to implement them in code um so you can like learn how to do, how to do them in code and also like just how to implement them um, and stuff like that so yeah, that's just to give you like tutorial or you or different kind of topics and I'm going over the next couple of weeks here. And as I said, there will be a new video every every week um, in, in a new topic. So the math and algorithms and data structures is not really that complex. Like you, you of course need the basic um, the math and calculus and stuff like that, but it's not really that complex and everyone should be able to follow along. So yeah, as I wrote here, like it's not really very complicated math and it is, it is more about like breaking problems into halves or like breaking bigger problems into smaller problems, which we call recurrence. So yeah, we're going to use that a lot in later videos and also some of the algorithms and stuff like that. Like they're, they're based on breaking problems into um, smaller, uh, smaller halves or like parts. And then we're also going to use the logarithms, which is the, like we always use the base two logarithms in algorithms of data structures. And we're going to use that for like um, space and time complexity and, and stuff like that, which we're going more in depth with in, in later videos. But the, like one of the things that you know need to know in math is just like how to use logarithms. And then we're going to use like a few sums and series like Fibonacci numbers or some other Taylor series and stuff like that. Um, it is kind of more like the, the more complicated uh, stuff with sums and series, but we're not going to use them a lot. And then we'll in introduce like how to do proof by induction. So yeah, that's 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 pretty much like the math we're going to use, and it's not really complicated, and like it's just basic math that is uh, the pre requirements for uh, for this tutorial. And then we have the introduction to the big O notation, which is a really important topic, and like how to like how to set it up for for time and space space complexity. So we use this O notation here, and then we have like some kind of um, function inside the O notation. So in case of we have uh, halving the problem, then we say that the, the o, o notation or the space complexity, uh, space or time complexity is lock in, which means that if we look over here in the graph and we say that we get more data input, like it will require less time if we if we have like um, an algorithm or data structure that are halving the problem, compared to if we just like check for all the combinations or like doing a linear search or something like that. So it's more like um, is a relation between like how many data inputs and time um, the x and um, y axis here it can either be time or space and then it's like more like the relation between how many data inputs or elements we have and then compared to to the time it takes to to do some sorting or or something like that and if we just go over like a couple more examples here we can have like a one for loop which will be o of n so it's at linear in linear so n is the elements in our for example list um, so it will be a linear. So if we have like 10, 10, 10 elements, it will take like 
um, n times n, n times that, and if we just like do two for loops and stuff like that, it will it will be the same in the same sequence. But if we have like for example two uh, nested for loops, then it will be n squared. So like the time and space complexity, it just gets more um, complex and it gets um, it gets worse worse if we're doing like nested for loops or we have to check for all combinations. So like the basic is just to like if we want to check if a number is in a list, like we can go through all the combinations, but it will require a lot of uh, space and also time in the worst case scenario. So that's why we're using algorithms and different kinds of algorithms and data structures to like half the problem so we so we get better space and time complexity. So yeah, this is just like a short introduction to the big O notation and we're going to use it in, in pretty much all videos um, there's going to be in this tutorial. And over here in the graph, we can just see that like the more complex it gets or if we check for all combinations, like we can see that the time just goes up here and we don't really have that much data input compared to if we, for example, just use the, the O log N, which is halving the problem, um, like as a binary search tree or something like that. But we're going to talk about uh, and more about it in, in later videos for sure. And then like the last example here, we have uh, like is introduction to a recursion. And recursion is just when a function um, it's call, it is calling itself. So when we set up a, a recursive function like down here, it has a base condition. So in this case, we're trying to return, like this function needs to return the sum of the first n natural numbers. So let's say that we enter three here, it needs to take the sum of one, two, and three. And then we start our recursive function with a base condition, we call it base condition. So when, whether we want to have like our function to stop, stop uh, calling itself. So when we're using recursive functions, like it always calls itself. So we need a base condition for it to like terminate uh, from the function or else it will just run um, like all the time. And then we're making progress towards the base case. So if we, for example, had here like five, then we will always like decrement the number here. So we go, we, we step down, which is like just making progress towards the base. So we end up in the base and then we terminate or go out of the function. And the problem is reduced on the way down. So we're like, we divide the problem that when we go down in the code, and then a solution is generated up way back in the uh, up the way back in the code with its concur, um, and we're going to talk about more of that in later videos as well. So it just means that when when we're going back down in our code here, like we just reduce the problem on the way down, and then a solution is generated um, on the way back up. So here, when the base condition is is true, like we just return the value here, and we have generated a solution on the way back up. And, and we use recursive functions to avoid solving the same instance of a problem repeatedly. So instead of just um, calling a function like several times or or we have to like do the same kind of uh, code or just and just copy paste it several times, like we can use um, recursive functions to avoid solving the same instance of a problem um, repeatedly. So we've now jumped into Sublime Text and I'm going to show you some different kind of examples with recursive functions. And first of all, we just start with including the different kind of libraries we're using, um, where we're using the standard library here, IOStream, and then we're going to use some the string library and also the math library. And in the first example here, as I showed you in, this, in, the, in the presentation, was um, the function here that returns the sum of the first n natural numbers. So in this case, we will enter a num an integer n here, and then we call the function, then we just say let that n plus um, recursive function, and then we call the function again, the recursive function again. And, but the next time we call it, we say that n minus one. So in this case, it will then be two, and we add the number three here to n. So in this case, then we call the recursive function again here with number two, and then we'll go down here and say that n plus plus two, and then it will recall the fun recursive function again. And in the next case, it will be um, a one. And when it's a one, and we we have summed it together with the other with the other numbers, and it gets less than or equal to one, we will return the value because then it hits our our base condition, which says which it says here, like stop recursion when n is zero or, or one, because like if we just insert one up here, we just need to return the n value as well. So that's why it's not equal to zero, but also like equal um, to to one. So if we go down here to our main function. And we call the the, in, um, the sum on number, and we call the recursive function here, and we insert a number three. If we print that out, hit um, Control B, Control B, it will print out the sum um, six. 
because when we insert a number three, it will it will say that three plus two plus one, which indeed equals six. So this is how we like we do a recursive function, which as as I showed you in the presentation. Um, another example here is like return the sum of the first n even numbers. We'll just take the second example down here. We will return the sum of the first n even numbers uh, squares. So in this case, we enter again again an integer n, and we say that uh, thus our base condition is uh, n when n is equal to zero. We will return an n, and the function will will terminate or we will go out of the function. Else, if it's not zero, if n is not zero, we will return the power because we need to return the numbers squared, and we will return the power of two when it's when it's squared and then we plus that um th that result to the to a recursive function call again and then we just say n minus one so in the in the case where we insert three here again like in the last function it will be two in the next one and we just keep adding these numbers together and taking the um the squares of this like the square of the number and we also take the only of the even numbers so we say that n plus n because then n um, if we say, for example, one plus one here, it will be it will be the even number. Or and if it was two, it will be two plus two, uh, which is four. And then we just take all um, even numbers here and and square them. So if we go down to our main function here again, and we just comment this out, so we can so we only see the next result here and comment this in, we can see that the even squares. And we took the second example, so it's this one. And if we print that out, it will be it will be twenty, and we entered five here. So then we will take uh, oh we entered two here. So then we will take the first two numbers, which is like the first two equal uh, even numbers, which will be two and four. And when we square them, then two squared uh, it's is four, and then four squared is sixteen, and then four plus plus sixteen it will be indeed twenty here. So that's also another example of how to do like. A recursive function in, in C++ and it is like kind of the same template we're using where we have a, a base condition here so we go out of the function when some base condition occurs or then we just do some some math and call the recursive function again we can also do it with like a Fibonacci number where we just take the last two like the last two numbers of the, the Fibonacci numbers and we add those numbers together so in case we take for example one two and the, like the Fibonacci number one two is it's like three and then we take like two plus three and so on so i'm not sure you like that examples but another example down here is like how we can return um if a, if a character it contains in a string and how we can do that in in a like a recursive way like we can also do it with some inbuilt uh, built-in functions and stuff like that but like just to show you some example with a recursive function of how to find a character um in a string so we give the three parameters this um, recursive function here, which we just call linear, and it will return a boolean, um, a boolean um, value here if it's if it contains um, if the character is inside the string or it's not. So we get the first parameter here is the string we want to check on, and then the character we want to check is if it's in the string, and then l is the is the length of the string. So again, we set up the base condition here is if if l like the length of the string becomes. Um, zero or less than zero, then we return false because then we have been through all the elements in the, in the string. And in this way, we're doing a linear search, so we're just checking for all elements, um, all elements in the string. Like in later videos, we're going to show. I'll, I'm going to show you some different kind of of algorithms and data structures as well, where it is not a linear search because they're like really time consuming and also space consuming. But in this case, we're just um, check in here then we check every element like first we take the last element of the string and check if it's equals to the to the character we want to check if it's in the string and if if one of the elements are equal to the character which we turn true because then the character is in the string or else if none of these conditions are true we go down here and we call the recursive function again but then we decrement the length of the um, of the string. So instead of checking on the last element, then the second time we call the recursive function, we check on the second last element in the string, and we just keep keep doing that until l is is uh, zero or uh, like less than zero. And if it's not like if we haven't seen the character c in the string, it will return false. And if at some point at some index we we see that the character is in the string, then we return true. So in this case, if we go down here and come this out. And we check here down in the last um, example here 
then we we have like this uh, contain contain string here. So what our string we want to check on is just a string um, which we define as hello, and then we want to check if the substring g um, is inside this string here, and then we just call the function um, function down here. So if, in this case, we print this out, we can see that the car is in string and it returns zero because it is false. So g does not um, contain, like g is not inside this string. And if we just want to like see if it works, if, if, this, if, if the character is inside the string, we can just say that e here, and we want to check if e is, in, is inside hello. And we run the program again, we can see that it now returns true. So we can check if, if, a, if a character um, contains in a string. So like, yeah, that's just, just some of the examples of like recursive functions in C++ and they're pretty much, um, pretty much like, it's just, it's just like a template where you have like some base condition and then you're just working, working down through your problem. And then on the way up, you return and it will generate the solution. So that's it for this video guys. In the next video, we are going to talk about the basic data structures. Um, we have like queues, stacks and lists. So I'm really looking forward to, to, the, to the next video I'm going to do in the next week because I'm doing some other tutorials like artificial intelligence and computer science and just like computer vision alongside um, this tutorial as well. So my plan is to do a new video in, in each of those tutorial um, every week. So yeah, remember to hit the subscribe button and bell notification under the video so you will get a notification when I upload a new video into one of those uh, tutorials I've talked about. So yeah, I just really appreciate that you're watching these videos and I'll link the next video up here where you can go check that out. And otherwise, I'll just see you in the next video, guys. Bye.